Welcome back. We're about to start installing the flap servos on this ASH-30. I've already done some prep work here and um, cut the slots for the horns and the, the flaps here towards the root and all the way out there at the tip and made my marks for my center lines on the servos and all that and this is going to be really tricky because um, we have to do two identical installations of two servos and these are the horns I'm going to be using right here and uh, kind of started prepping the servos a little bit we're using Cha servos again, HV150Hs, pretty beefy servos. So the trick here is everything's got to be identical. Um, the horns have to be on exactly the same position. The arms or the rods have to be exactly the same length. And the horns have to be installed um, exactly in the same position. And the servos have to be centered the same and everything for, for both these servos to work together and not fight each other. So this is kind of a, an install that's going to take a little more time and thought than just putting one servo on one surface. But uh, let's get started. Alright, I glued some balsa blocks to each side of the horns to give it a level base so it's square. And also to keep it from slipping back in uh, to the control surface. And those are just really going to allow me to kind of position the horn much more accurately. And my plan is to mix up resin and apply the resin on the inside of the surface and behind the horn here, but use CA to tack the um, balsa blocks to the skin to firmly hold it in place while the resin is curing. And uh, I think that's just that process will let me keep the horns in good alignment uh, much easier. Okay, updates. Uh, I have glued in all the control horns in both panels, epoxied them in, and now we're going to start playing around with the linkage and the servos and seeing how identical I can make everything. Okay, after much tinkering, I've come up with a length for the rods that seems to work across both panels and all the bays. And that's 65 millimeters, so I adjusted all these rods to get as close to 65 as possible. And what I'm going to do now is just go across all these and put a drop of CA on them, on the threads where they meet the clevises, to fix them at that length so they can't rotate. So, I'm um, trying to program the servos, the center, to get them identical. And I started with this one. And as you can see, I put two pins in these aluminum horns and use the KST uh, servo park programmer to program this servo to make it match this guy and then I'm going to use this one to match this one and you know that's 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 how it's going to go and then this will match with this again and hopefully these will all be as identical as I can get them and I have them on a um, thick uh, fiberglass uh, G10 plate that's dead flat so hopefully this works out okay. I'm ready to go with uh, these two servos and this wing panel. The frames are assembled and prepped. Got some plastic protecting the servos from the epoxy. I've scuffed up the bay and cleaned it all out with alcohol and a vacuum. So we're basically ready to go. We've got to ensure the servos stay centered at all times and uh, make sure that we tape up the surface right here and um, yeah, get all the pins in and get the epoxy mixed up and all that good stuff. Okay, skipping ahead a few steps. Uh, servos are installed. They're epoxied in place. I got the uh, ballast slugs holding everything down there, as you can see. That's the uh, one closer to the tip. And then if we scroll down past the spoiler servo, and then we get to the uh, innermost flap servo here. So we're going to let this cure overnight and it's going to be really interesting to see how these servos operate in unison. I'm actually going to build a huge Y harness for these and uh, theoretically we should be able to plug them into the Y harness and they should work synchronized together but we'll see how it comes out. Well we got the epoxy all cured up here. The flap servos are basically done. Um, I have yet to take the plastic out and button up the servos, thread lock the screws and all that. 
the clips still need the or the pins still need the eclipse, but I have um, the servos hooked up with a Y harness to my tester. <laughs> um, so theoretically, if they're synced up and everything's identical, they should work just fine without going crazy, and we're gonna test it out. Try to center it up. <clears throat> so yeah, I, th to me, uh, it, it seems like they're working just fine. They're not making crazy noises. Um, everything seems to operate pretty smooth and freely. Um, I will do, do some load tests to see if they're pulling the same current. But so far, I'm really happy with the way these, these guys came out. All right, well, I've buttoned up the flap servos. Um, they're thread locked in. I removed the plastic. All the clips are in place. All of that is great. They're looking really good. And uh, I'm using this, I'm using a toolkit uh, servo tester to test the current that each servo is drawing. Um, you can't really see the screen, oh there it is, you can see uh, it, it, dis it displays the, uh, the amps that the servos are drawing and I wasn't getting anything excessive uh, with the servos when I was moving the flaps so you know I think everything's working really well I think this basically came out as good as I can get it and I'm happy with that and um, yeah so we're done with the flaps and that basically wraps up all the servo installation in all of the wings, all of the wing panels. Um, we'll save the wiring and the covers uh, till later. But yeah, we're going to wrap this video up here. So that was the flap servo install on this ASH-30. The next video we're going to uh, do is going to be the rudder servo install in the fuselage. So basically the first time that we're going to be tackling the fuselage. So I look forward to that, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.